and my mic does say it's working this time, so uh, better be. <laughs> oh, get that in-game volume back up for everyone so they can hear the awesome, awesome music and stuff as well. Now, if the in-game volume ever gets too loud, just uh, online. give me a nudge. Personal digital assistant, Iris. Now, how does that look? Um, here, let's get rid of me. Yeah, let's just... Can I move me? Do I want to move me? Yeah, let's put me down here. And this up here for now. Yeah, let's just hide that. That's not important. You guys, if you're here, you probably found me through that, so... Follow our goals part of the overlay, so I don't really want to get rid of that too much, so... My name is Iris. I'm the personal digital assistant. I'll be getting you ready for experience one day in what? Arcade management. 99.97%. Say, trust me. Minimum. Hmm. Before we begin, please tell me a bit about yourself. Your name, what you like, that sort of thing. Oh, hold on. This has got to be so much fun. Arcade. I've already decided I'm going to name my character Riley, because I can. Uh, Dixon. Okay. Now, I don't personally use that, but my character will. Oh, I miss my colored hair, so she's getting bright colored hair. Specifically purple, because I miss my purple colored hair. Hey, what are you moving around back there? What you doing, cat? I see you. What you doing? Yes, I'm stopping it, playing the game to pet the cat. Eye color, clothing color. Well, we need it down to go with. But you know, Riley's pretty gender neutral. Also, ignore my proper my fake advertisements. I'm glad that weird girl app who losing my phone talking to this one. Seriously. I mean, I need a job of working in an arcade? Seriously? Here in 20XX, video arcades are pretty mainstream. Like laying up the movies or grabbing pizza or something. Although back in 1980X, we were narrowly avoided a video game crash, which might have destroyed the whole industry. Dodged a bullet there. I wonder if there's some dystopian unit version of 20XX, but that happened truly the darkest timeline. But actually working in an arcade is risky, like working in a landmine factory, particularly a little mom and pop place like this one that could go bankrupt any day now. Everyone has a dream they're chasing. Theory? No doubt you'll find Joseph as well. Is what she told me when I joined on with Francine's Arcade Funplex. I don't know if working here is my dream, exactly. Truthfully, I haven't been to an arcade in a... Let's see. Fifteen years. But, well, how best can I put this? Is response based on your personality. 
quirky. So smileys are quirky. That makes sense. Balance is steady, kindly, gutsy, basically. So this is every kid's game come true. I'm willing to take this seriously. Eh, why not? Let's do this. I'm looking for hope after so. Honestly, I've run through a dark, depressing span of years. If this is the light at the end of my tunnel, I yearn to find it. I want to find my dream. Even in an arcade. At least my first day has been pretty quiet. No customer service crises for me to deal with. Just a bunch of regulars playing their usual games and of course, my coworkers. May as well wander the floor a bit, see if anybody needs help. That's Naomi Fairchild, or Techie. She fixes up these old 1980X machine X games, which are constantly breaking down. Hey Naomi. Ah! ah. Oh. oh. Hello. Settling in okay? No problems? Did you have lunch yet? Can you pass me that multimeter before the power supply and this game melts down? Or er, uh sure, here you go. Thanks. Vickerson's it's quiet in here. Today, I'd do some work on the floor. Hmm. Though I should probably go to grab some pearl replacement parts. Excuse me! Next is Percy Sinclair, a world record high score chaser on Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze, the hottest arcade title of 1980X. He's been working on hitting that goal ever since coming over here from England, as far as I know. Possibly without food or sleep. Hey, Percy. Hello, hello. Hey, Percy. Need anything? A snack? Water? I'm making rounds. Um, no, no, no. I'm quite well, thank you. Yeah, my English accent is top, guys. Top choice. Just, just a choice. How long have you been standing there? Don't you need to go to the bathroom eventually? Much obliged. That's what extra lives are for. I appreciate the concern, love, but I'll be just fine. Thanks for the inquiry, mind you. Next, I swing by our fist of discomfort machine, which Always has some fierce competition going down between esports pros and wannabes. In case it wasn't clear, the one on the left is the pro, Queen Bee, representing L7 Gaming, a prestigious FOD team. Feel the offense, got it, yeah. She even uses a portable rig of webcams and lights to stream her matches over the internet. Funplex is basically your personal broadcast studio. You need anything, Queen Bee? Doing rounds. What the f no, I'm- oh, come the f*** on. There's a f way that this is even possible. Those hitboxes don't even connect. Who cares? This isn't a tournament. I'm taking the win. Yeah, sorry, not happening. Did I mention I happened to buy an extra ultimate technique scroll from the item store? Take this. What? How did you defeat me? I can still see part of the save screen. There we go. There. Oh, GG! <laughs> oh, I love the voices. Oh, wow! Queen Bee's really going at him today. That's Ashley. She works the floor alongside me, solving any arcade type problems we find out there. Hmm. I wonder how we're annihilating every single person who walks up to the game is really helping the arcade in the long run. You tell me. I'm new here. I don't know anything about... Like, anything. At the very least, it's entertaining to watch. <laughs> hey, thanks. thanks for covering the floor. I need to head back and work on my pinky costume. The head keeps falling off. Bye -bye. A cosplayer's work is never finished. Ash Blue Wolf away! And lastly, we have our Showtime stage dance team leader, Teo. Hello there. Hello, hello. Having a lovely day. Not half as lovely as you, I should have. Who is a big old flirt? Just the rounds, like Gavin told me to do. Nothing special going on. Show me your moves. Well, if you ever want to show me your moves, you know where to find me. Oh right, how could I forget about Gavin? He's the business manager. Well, he doesn't own the place, but close enough. Mix Dixon. 
Mr. Cooper. I trust your first day is going well. No issues. All is quiet on the Western Front. Good to hear. Good, good. Only a few more hours till closing. With any luck, we can escape today in a reasonably profitable state and live to see another day. Got the head fixed. Look, look. Ah, yes, it's a se that's the semi terrifying mascot of the Funplex. Pinky the Funplex Flamingo. I nearly went to cardiac arrest the first time I saw that. Next time we got a bunch of kids here, I'll be ready. Sweet. And I'm happy to announce our joust is fixed at last. Uh, I did I did have to order a few more replacement parts for Gauntlet, though it went down moments later. Typical. Well, all in all, still not a bad day. And not a bad first day for you, Riley. That was my first day at Francine's Arcade Funplex. Hope you had fun. I mean... By the way, I've booked a birthday party for this afternoon. Um... Looks of confusion now I tear on their faces, all laughter dying off immediately, are vaguely concerning to me. Oh dear. Sorry, sorry, I meant to tell you dears, but I plum forgot. Uh, birthday party? How old are the kids, I may ask? It's her fifth birthday. Oh, to be young again. Five year olds? Naomi starts pulling at her hair, eyes wide and trembling. Throwing ski balls over hands in the glass, jumping up and down on pinball machines. Putting chewing gum into the coin slots. Pulling at my costume, tearing off pieces of it. Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. We survived kids' birthday parties before. Doom, doom, the end is nigh. My, oh my. Well, I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. Time for my afternoon nap, anyway. Have fun, dears. Right, battle stations, everyone. I'll take the tickets desk so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids. Naomi, watch for hardware damage. Riley, roaming duty. Look for trouble. Do what you can. Prepare yourselves. They are coming. Like an oncoming tidal wave, the rubble fe is felt before it is seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot. Many vans, discouraging kindergartners, and suddenly... Oh, they're so cute! It's just even got a little fox on her shirt. I like it. Oh, my cat left me. I only knew that because I heard her going down the stairs. <clears throat> She's very loud. An explosion of small humans rushes the doors, bursting into the arcade before scattering every which way. Even before any of them can get tokens, they're grabbing at joysticks, mashing buttons, eager to get their game on or even just pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations and they all meet by the fragile pinboy on machines. Ashley near the door, trying to distract the incoming kids to greet them. Gavin, armed with pre-stacked $10 rolls of coins, quickly exchanges them with adults, beats waiting in line at the change machines. As the programmers, well, Queen Bee and Teo's friends bolt for the exits, abandoning them, keen on getting out ahead of the surge of kitties, I guess. That's all very well good, but I've got no idea where I'm supposed to be. Roaming duty. Gavin said, look for trouble, Gavin said. I mean, I was doing that before, but now? Now the chaos has multiplied. For a few minutes, I'm like a pinball being bounced around, or like that frog trying to cross a highway of traffic. Eventually, I spot three possible problems on the rise. In Riley, professional floor attendant, it is ready to attend to them. Which one of these do I want to tackle first, though? She gets fighting over a box of cupcakes, and her name on Ashley. Shawnee had a kid named Terry and her baby. But her girl crying about stolen tickets near Percy and Gavin. Who do I like the most? I really love Naomi and Ashley. I mean, it smells disaster on the wind, and it smells sweet. As in, I can smell that box of birthday cupcakes one of the parents left near the ticket desk with kids swarming around it, scavenging for their favorite icing colors. As my first inner child is merely offended that the, someone thought one of those icing blob cupcake cakes was fit, superior to actual birthday cake. But there are clearly larger issue stakes than that. I want a chocolate. Don't take all the chocolate. I want two cupcakes. Give me two cupcakes. No fair. Everybody gets one and mine's gotta be chocolate. Of course the kid at the front grabs the last one. 
Finders keepers, losers weepers. The parents aren't paying attention. They're too busy complaining about their jobs and the weather and the PTA and stuff. Meaning, when the first cupcake is thrown, nobody is there to stop it. Ah, stop it, stop it. I wanted chocolate. Blobby Watts of Icing and Sponge Go Flying, I glance over to the coin op games, which are about to get caught in the crossfire. Nomi is busy trying to unjam a joint stick. One of the kids waggle too hard, looks up to see the cupcake onslaught coming her way. As does Ashley, whose cozy costume is nice and inviting target for a flying confectionery. At fast, Riley. So adorable. How do I choose Ashley's costume? <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. I love this animation. Including sugary slime jump right the exposed joystick she was fixing. Ash is at my side in an instant. I know, damn you, unjust universe. Ashley, it's so cold. Why still, Riley? I won't let you die on me. I'm not dying. The ice is just kind of cold and sticky and gross. Oh, well, that's okay then. At this point, the last days of parents have finally noticed the pace she wears and are busy rounding up the combatants for various scoldings. Naomi's near tears as she affixes an out of order sign to the screen with sticky tape. Feels like pulling a death shroud over it. Aww. Man, I just fixed this game. And I've got icing in my hair and in my work apron and. Ugh. Back to the workshop, I guess. When I want to plug it back in like this, there might be an electrical short. Uh, sorry. My body's not really wide enough to cover both of you properly. I don't think your job contract covers cupcake defense, so you did more than you had to. I don't blame you. Now where's that dolly? There's the least I can do. I quickly help her move the game to the back room. Now Omi follows to get cracking on the repairs. Wow, they really got you good, didn't they? What is Hey, okay, I wonder if you have superpowers now. What? Well, most superheroes have some tragic accident in their backstory. One which gives them abilities beyond that of any mortal man. Let's see. Young Riley Dixon, a shiftless and directionless sump 20 something, cut down in their prime by a cupcake onslaught, wakes up the next day to find they've obtained the strength and speed of a cupcake. What? Wait, no. That doesn't work. No, instead they can summon cupcakes to do their bidding. Together with an army of sugary delights, they fight crime! Coming this fall from Marvel Studios. What do you think? Um. I like it. It's section I direct to have Chris Pratt name my watch star with Gilford Go Gilbert Gottfried as Cuppy the Talking Cupcake. Sure, true calling is movie production. Ah, uh, my people call your people and they'll all do lunch. But seriously. Thank you. Thanks. You didn't have to take that mess from me, but you did. And I really appreciate it. I'll cover the floor a little while you go change, okay? We'll talk later. No problem. Be seeing ya. Brief nod from Gavin, I snap which one of the official fun plexi for to replace my cupcake top. After a few minutes of bathroom to change a white icing off the pants, I'm ready to go again. Right, that's that sorted out. I've only got time to deal with one more problem though. Which one? Ooh, an angry adult shouting at a kid near Teo and Queen Bee. Or a little girl crying about so many I don't really care about these two. Those are the only four I care about. Ultimate then fast card fives racing games. Shouting adults and crying children are never particularly good signs, and I hope beyond, beyond hope that I could take this on. Shakes the discomfort off. Now is not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on and stat. 
As you get closer to the rubbing of engines and the cackling, clacking of shifting gears, I see a grown woman berate a cowering boy. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't. Admit it. I know what you did, rat. You manipulated my precious son to put his tokens in your game. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sorry. Children like you are the absolute worst. Garbage. Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout at a child, no less. What's going on here? A shirk of a boy told my sweetest, beyond sweet Josh, that he should put in his own tokens into the racing machine so he could play it for free. Josh earned those tokens from his own allowance, and I won't let that devil child steal his money. Let's talk. Take just a moment to calm down, okay? Before I say anything else, I spot Queen Bee and Teo out of the corner of my eye. Queen Bee looks infuriated, and Terio has his bare face buried in his hand. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, they may have some insight. The racing games right next to Showtime stage. Shit, Aunt Teo probably had a good vantage point of the whole thing if he was dancing on stage. And just by the way Queen Bees are furrowed, I can tell something is not sitting right with her. Sorry, need to adjust my back pillow. I could ask one of them for help. Or I could try to solve this one by myself. Oh, I'm consulting Queen Bee on the situation. He's consumed by rage. I bet she knows what's really going on here. The wave her over join us, attempt to reach out to reach out to her for guidance. Ma'am, I know you're upset right now, but I think that What the f ladies no good shit. Nope, not helping. This in fact the furthest away from helping I could fire her in a vision. The kid runs away to avoid the loud people, so I try my best to defuse the situation. I... That boy did nothing wrong. That, nothing. Um... Excuse me? Hard. How dare you? There's no way I'm getting word in between these two. So I resign myself watching it play out. How dare I? How dare you for yelling at that kid? I don't care if he did what you claim or not. You've got no right to traumatize him over it. He's a thief, and he'll grow up to be a no-good criminal. That still doesn't matter. Do you honestly think, like, take a single second of your life and really think that shouting at a child is an effective way to handle this? Ugh, you can't tell me how I should act. It's not a real answer. Why not try asking a boy what happened before you jump down his throat? Shut up and listen before you assume you know everything. What? That's not. Who do you think you are? I am the nemesis of evildoers, writer of, wrong, of wrongs, the rising star of L7 Games. No one can defeat me, Queen B. I am the one and only Queen B. And in the name of the Funplex, I'll punish you. Well, I've never, in all my years, had a far worse than an incongruent child. Impundent child. Voices are really hard. Damn it. If anyone is here, make sure you remind me and tell Ben how. I want to know how he does the voices in not half a drink every 30 seconds. Josh! Josh, get over here. We are leaving this horrible arcade. Right now. Well, that's one way to handle that. When she's a child and storms out the front door. I don't think we'll see her or son anymore. Frankly, I'm okay with that. Once they're gone, Queen Bee turns her attention back to me. Come on! People like that really have pissed me off. My blood's still boiling. Oh, oh hey. thanks for the backup. Uh, you're welcome. Rose didn't do much of anything. Yeah, well, I know you have him back, kid. It's nice you're like me. Can't stand to see people getting screamed at. It sucks. Bee's whole aura changed from her normal upbeat snark to being completely down at the dumps. This is a side of her I hadn't seen yet. She just looks so sad. I know it's really none of my business, but I feel I should ask about this. Looks like the incident hit her hard. Hey, everything all right? It's okay, you can tell me. Pause her for a second before her normal smile creeps back on her lips. Seriously, I'll be fine. I just don't like seeing adults treat kids like their future's nothing. Like they'll be worthless stains in society. 
I had a lot of people tell me I could never be a professional gamer, that I should quit daydreaming, and I say, fuck those people. Anyone tell you who you are? Hey. They. Thanks. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it, kid. Okay, show's over. You should go check on that boy. The boy. I totally forgot. You're right. I always am. Now, if you excuse me, I need to try and squeeze in a few more matches before quitting time. Maybe takes one more moment to triangulate the safest path back to fist of discomfort through a sea of children. After poking around a bit, I managed to find the kids still shaken up from the whole ordeal. Hey, sorry about all that. You going to be okay? I think so. I swear I didn't do anything. The other kitty just came up out of nowhere and dropped his token in my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him. He just ran away. And then that woman approached you and you started yelling. The boy nods, wiping his snotty nose on his sleeve. Uh-huh. Well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady is gone. And I don't think she's ever coming back. Especially after the late Queen Bee earned her. The boy, cheeks still streaked with tears, lets a smile spread on his face. Thank you. And tell the other lady thanks for sticking up for me too. I nod and the boy screws off and joins some of his other friends. Two problems in the can. Not to deal with that crying kid in the ski ball machines. Oh, she's gone. Well, crap. Percy looks up briefly from clearing level 78 of Moopy. Looking for Looking for that girl. I think her pants to go home. Hodgson saw for her, I suppose. That was Scottish. That wasn't British at all. This is Scottish. I can't really do a very good British. I can do a prim and proper British. Eh, drat. Wasn't fast enough. You can't be everywhere at once, Riley. Cheer up, love. Yeah, he's gonna be Scottish. Don't care. He's still doing better than the last guy who stood at your post. Seconded. Saw you deal with that obnoxious parent with a cupcake board. You did well today. St. Gavin actually smiling is weird. We're not going to say no to praise from a sub boss. These need to be cooling down. I suggest you take a few minutes in the break room while there's a lull in the action. Ash and I will handle things for now and she can swap off when you come back. Mm -hmm. Percy ducks out of the conversation without actually moving anywhere, refocusing on his game. I could use a few minutes. Yeah, thanks Gavin, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. I slip away, headed for the employee lounge. Some hours later, from the cars pulling up in the parking lot, it looks like the party's over. It's just about closing time in the arcade now. Anyway, most of the gamers have fled, filed out by now if they hadn't fled by the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to go bug Gavin to finish up my employment paperwork, but eh, that can wait. Crowny wants to find out why. Ashley's quietly come preparing her costume. Maybe she could use company. No whammy's prying gum out of the coin slot. Looks ready to cry. She's packing up her beer. Tail's going down some fast cars. Five before the day is through. Percy's fine. He's finished the movie the game and is ready to leave. I'm gonna go check on Naomi because I think she's adorable. Because she kind of reminds me in her look of Diva and not gonna lie. Yeah, couldn't tell. Diva. Um. I mean, it definitely looks like she could use a hand. Someone's jammed bright pink bubble gum into a coin slot and she's trying to clear the sticky mess out. Actually, I'm gonna quick save here again. How could they? How could they do this to a poor, innocent little Cubert? Hey, need a hand? Oh, thank goodness, yeah. Work on the second player slot for me. I've got swabs and stuff in my kit there. Grab what you need. Honestly. The nerve of these kids. No respect at all for these games. Games aren't like shoe proof machine washable baby toys. They're Dallas kit and deserve love and care. But they are toys, right? Well, yeah, I mean, of course, just, you know, they're also works of art. I know, not everybody sees it that way. Back in the 80s, operators would just, just throw away games that didn't perform well anymore. In the end, an arcade has to make money. That means using and abusing a game until it's time to put it out to pasture. But I don't have to like it, right? Of course not. 
You love these games. You shouldn't just let them be abused, even if they do have to make money. Next time you see some kids smacking a game around, stuffing them in the slot or whatever, you let me know. I'll deal with them. Thanks, Riley. It's good to know someone's got my back. Still, I need to be realistic, right? I know this isn't a museum. We aren't preserving priceless treasures for generations to come. Sometimes I treat it like my private collection, but really, I do want people to play and enjoy these games and wear them. And that does wear them down in time. Sorry, I was trying to get a little cat. Hi, little cat. Where are you at? Come here. It's so well, little cat. No, he's still. Go on. Your feet are wet. As long as I'm here, I'll pick up a game and wobbles on its feet, dust it off, straighten it up, and send it out to be there to be played with all over again. This will last the gum pulls out of the slot now and we closes up her toolbox. I should probably go to pulling the max entirely and give him a good cleaning tomorrow, but I didn't want to let the gum sit overnight. And Riley? Thank you. I'm glad you're here to help through this tough times and the good. You can endure a birthday party. Well, you can endure anything. I got her dirty. I'm gonna get her dirty. Oh, oh did I find a good spot? Poor cat. Anyway, I better head home now. See you tomorrow? You got it, Naomi. That was just my first day. Was there anyone would have come after that haunted arcades, crowded game conventions, cosplay craziness, and cutthroat tournament competition? Not to mention the one rival who was waiting in the wings to swoop in and destroy the Plunplex once and for all. So is this arcade seriously my dream job? Most of my life has been a lucky, hopeless run of it. This arcade was the bright, shining spot of hope in my life. That's why I agreed to work here. Maybe the smiles I saw today, even alongside the frowns, prove this was meant to be, maybe. Either way, I'm ready and willing to face what comes next. Are you? A winner is you! This is adorable! Oh my god! Gentle Thank you. Thank you. 